my name is Dr. Michael McAbee. I have been working with our little brothers and sisters, Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos, for over 50 years, since Father William Wasson, the founder, asked me to help with a volunteer program. Uh, what is so impressive that I've seen over these years is that we have seen the children who came as orphans to NPH grow up, go to universities, and come back as leaders. And we've also seen volunteers who've come from Europe and the United States who have also stayed and become leaders in homes. Today we're going to hear from four very impressive leaders of this organization from Miguel Venegas, who is the executive director of the whole international organization. We're going to hear from Marlon Velasquez, national director, Nicaraguan organization, and Kenson Kass is national director in Haiti, and also from Stefan Forsberg, who came as a volunteer from Europe and became the national director in Honduras. Let's start out uh, with Miguel Venegas, the executive director of Our Little Brothers and Sisters. Tell us something about your history within NPH uh, and how that led to becoming a leader. Well, I remember um, when I was growing up at NPH, I, I, I saw Father Watson, um, he's a visionary. Uh, leader and he always had hermanos mayores or pequeños in leadership positions and and uh, many times when when I was uh, with my friends I saw a lot of in injustices uh, and there was not you know decisions that were not really fair and uh, many times uh, and not and there were not decisions on um, uh, that affected me but affected others or my friends so um, I remember my friend uh, my very best friend Carlos and I used to go to the director and complain about the decision that was done against them you know so it, it always um, affected me that they were not able to defend themselves so I thought I needed to defend them, you know, and every time there was something, you know, they would look for me and, and, uh, and my friend and say, you know, please, we want to do this, we want to do this, uh, can you speak on our behalf? And so we, we went to the director and say, this is what we want to do, or, or this is not, this is something we're not... Um, so, so people wanted to follow you, they asked you to be a leader, in effect. Yeah, I mean, well, they, they always were looking for me, and one time, yeah. I remember, I honestly don't remember this, but now that I see my friends, years later, they said, so I'm not surprised you are an executive director now, and I said, why, why do you say that? And they said, well, because every time, you were saying all the time, when I grow up, I'm going to become a director because I want to make a difference. <laughs> and it's just, I, I, I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember that. <laughs> what, what are the qualities you need to be a leader of this whole organization? Um, I, I think, um, you know, for me, leadership is not so much as... Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit later about my different positions, but for me, leadership is not so much a position or a title. You know, you are the executive director, but more of of uh, 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 availability or disposition, the the attitude of of being there to help. And I think that you need that. You need the attitude. You need the the uh, uh, the disposition to to be able to do something. On, on uh, for the benefit of others, um, you know you need to be patient. <laughs> you need to be mindful, mindful of yourself and and, and about others. You really need to be uh, taking into account others' characters or other personalities, other cultures. So uh, 
So what you're, one of the things you're implying, leadership is really different from management. Management has to do with getting things done. Leadership right. has to do with getting people to follow, to, to uh, develop, to um, creating a, a environment where they can grow, uh, having principles and values that are followed. These are very different things. Now, probably you have to be both a leader and a manager. Exactly. You need to take, for sure, you need to, to be able to manage and to get things done, for sure, for sure. But, yeah, there is this uh, intangible, intangible skill about the attitude the, and taking into account all of the values that, that um, back up your, 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 your job. You know, we, we, with Father Watson in MPH, we learn the values of sharing, loving your neighbor or loving your, your friend the way they love, the, the way you love yourself, you know. So if I love myself, I can love the others and care for others, uh, sharing and responsibility, responding to, to the needs of others and, 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 um, and work. Can you say something about uh, your education and how that has been a part of developing your capability? Yes, for sure. I, for me, education has been um, uh, very key for me in my life. I, the, the minute I went into MPH, I had this opportunity to study and to break my, the cycle of poverty and the cycle of ignorance. Uh, and, and, and I just had this goal uh, of uh, finishing a, a something, uh, an education, because I thought education is going to be able to help me break the cycle of, of ignorance. I didn't want to be ignorant, and I didn't want to be poor anymore. So that, that, that was helpful for me. Uh, I learned English. I went to university. I graduated, uh, and then I went uh, to work um, for a company that uh, outside MPH. Then I came to MPH, and then I continue to study. I continue to to educate myself. Um, I try to read books. I know that I'm not perfect. I I have a lot of skills uh, uh, to learn. Um, so I'm I'm trying always to read books to to be able to learn more about leadership, about management, about all the things that I don't have the skills for. Well, you, you got an MBA too, didn't you? I did, I did. Uh, and I think that was really helpful because the MBA helped me for my executive director position. Um, because even though you have, I had experience, the MPH know-how, uh, I, I think that you still need those uh, uh, abilities uh, so, to be able to manage. So if a young Pequeño came to you and said, how do I become a leader at NPH? What would you say to him? Or her? <laughs> right, right. No, I, um, you know, Family Services has this um, um, program of youth development. And, and we, they have uh, set up this program of uh, youth conference every year. And, and we're talking about people from all of the homes, the nine homes, coming, young people coming to, to, to this conference. And I'm able to tell my story since the time I arrived, or the time before I arrived into MPH, my time with MPH, and how my life was so very similar to theirs. So what I'm telling them is that I always advise them, you need, you need to have this goal, don't stop dreaming about a specific goal, focus on that goal, don't let go of that dream, and, and, and continue to fight for it. It's not going to be hard, I mean, it's not going to be easy, it's hard, um, but, but I, I'm not a, a, a superhero or super person, I'm a regular person that was able to break the cycle of ignorance and the cycle of poverty, so they can do that. If I can do this, they can, they, they can do that as well. Yeah, but like you, perhaps they need to start by responding to needs, uh, <laughs> responding to injustices. You don't, you don't just become a leader because you want to. There's something in you that responds to the needs of people. 
Correct. And, and during that conference also, I, I tell them, you have this uh, um, experience or, or this um, advantage of being in this, in this conference. Only a few can, can do that. Out of the 3,600 kids that we take care of, you, 50, are able to come here and learn a lot of uh, leadership skills. So you have that influence. And when you go back, you have 16, 17 years old. So when you go back, there are going to be kids that are going to be looking up to you. So you can be an influence to them. And like you said, respond to, to the need. If you see a kid that, that, it's, that needs help, that, that it's isolated in a place, why you go get closer and, and, uh, and accompany that person. Sometimes the only thing a child needs is just one person to be able to, to uh, inspire them and, and, um, and encourage them, encourage the others, encourage that kid that, that it's isolated to, to be able to grow uh, healthy. Thank you very much. It's inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Michael B. Now we're going to hear from Marla about his history at NPH. Good morning. For me, it's an honor to be interviewed by you. I mean, I never dream about it, but it's an honor. Uh, actually, I grew up on the streets of Tegucigalpa, going from place to place, trying to find a place where I could sleep or eat, a place where I could call home. And then, then suddenly, God put NPH into my life. Into my life. So uh, when I came into the house, I found out that education was negotiable that I needed to go to school, then I, that I needed to get an education in order to, to break the cycle of poverty and in order to help myself. At the beginning, I never considered myself uh, a leader. And actually, I was kind of a lonely person. I used to go into my own space and try to get what I needed to get at MPH, you know? But a uh, time went by and then people started to encourage me to, to start seeing things from a different perspective. Because when I came home, I was like, this is just Marlon. So I have to get everything just for Marlon. But then I, I, I found mentors within MPH that transformed my life into who I really needed to be or what I really need to be doing. So they taught me to, to achieve my goals, but in a way in which I could use them to help other people, to work with children. So when I was little, I let the children, got, I mean, my roommates got, never got close to me because I was kind of more focused into education, education, education. But then uh, I got the chance to grow with Father Watson, and that was a big difference in my life, you know, it's like that. He took me to the States, he asked me what I wanted to study. I told him that I wanted to be an electronical engineer, you know, fixing airplanes, wiring wires, welding wires and things like that. So he just looked at me and said, you want to make money, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I want to make money. I wanted to survive when I get home. So he just told me, you are being too narcissist. You are not thinking about, about other people. So he told me once, I'm going to teach you how to love your family. I'm going to teach you to get education so you can help others. So I remember that I, I tried to understand him, but I couldn't at that time. So I went through my education and then suddenly when I was working with some of the children in Honduras, I met this young boy, Christi Christopher was his name. Nobody could understand him, what was going on in there. So I tried to help too and I couldn't do anything. You know, and so, Suddenly, I found out that it was an engineer in the area where I wanted to go through. And so I decided to study psychology. So Father wasn't supporting me to go through psychology and things like that. So I got this education and then I went back to Nicaragua, where I'm working right now, and I started doing a job from supporting the children that I'm taking care of. So uh, you went to a university. Which university it was? I went through Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff and I got a, a major in psychology and a minor in social work. 
I never got any administration skills, and believe me, sometimes that drives me crazy, and sometimes that really makes me upset when I have to get well, into that, numbers. <clears throat> Tell us, what is really the role of a national director? Why is leadership needed? I always consider myself not as a national director. I'm not a national director. I'm an older brother. An older brother that I have to follow the model that I had from my mentors, like Father Watson, Reinhardt, you, Father Rick, who had made a lot of influence in my life. You know? So I feel like I have to honor those values that I have learned from all these people and try to encourage them within my children. So, there has to be a national director, but that's just a title. That's just a name that uh, somebody has to put on my door. But uh, after I leave that room, I'm one of them. And they have to see me as somebody who's willing to go all the way down with them and all the way up with them. Somebody who <coughs> can be fighting against them and sometimes playing with them and sometimes fooling around with them. Well, Marlon, we're going through uh, NPH is now going through a real need for change. It's a lot of um, changes brought about by government regulations, the need uh, to not just be a home for children, but also connect to the community more. And you've already been doing that. What, what kind of qualities does that require? Father Watson once said, you have to know where you are coming from, so you know where you will go to. Uh, we have done a lot of different programs over in Nicaragua, but we are trying not to lose the, the, the essence of our family. And it's like a, people out, outside can call us an orphanage, people outside can call us a program, people outside can call us an outreach program, however they want to call us. But uh, inside of NPH, we are a family. We have to share the values of security, love, faith, and, and that I'm a brother, I'm not a director. And, and we've been struggling, especially to me, because like uh, somebody told me, listen, you, we have to take these changes with your head and with your heart. And to me, with my head, it's clear that I have to do it. With my heart, it's, it's struggling on how to put things together so we don't lose what I learned from Father, what I learned from Reinhardt what I learned from the people that surround me. But uh, things that we've been doing is like, we go back to what Father left to us. It's like, okay, Marlon, you have to love that kid. Not as a number, but as a brother, as a sister. You have to forgive them. You have to encourage them. And then, now that we are having a bigger group and people who, and children are going back and forth, it is even tougher because the connection we used to have is less than before. But we usually talk that uh, no matter if this kid comes for one day, that child has to understand what MPH is. A family with love, security, a philosophy, and values that nobody can take away. Now, do you have to do any kind of relation with uh, government people or community people outside of the organization. In other words, we're part of, you're part of a larger mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how do you interact with that larger culture? I try to be four steps ahead of them. I learned that. And I learned that through the, now that's a leadership <laughs> skill. <laughs> that's, because with far we, we will be like, yes, here with the children, all the time with the children, eating with the children, sleeping, I mean, for him, we're supposed to be there all the time. Those things are like kind of changing and bouncing around. With the different changes that the government are bringing into, it's like, no way, we have to be ahead of them. And the good thing of being ahead of them, like four steps ahead of them, is that uh, you can go back to your roots. You can go back to who, who the pequeño really is and what Father Watson really wanted it to be and then apply those things to the children yeah. that we are working with. And so, and the government actually, <coughs> in one way or another, they understand it, you know, it's like that, because we are running different kind of program, 
inside of NPH like the leadership. Well, I think you're making the crucial point. Everything has to focus on what's good for the children and their development. That's right. If you lose that, you lose the whole, the whole, the whole purpose. Exactly. But if you have that, then you can build and you can get other people involved because people really can understand mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that is our focus. Exactly. Now, we have a, a big advantage that the children still coming to us. No matter if they come for a day, for a week, for a month, the children are coming to our home. Of course, we have other programs outside, but uh, that's a, a strongest one. Well, thank you very much, Marlon. It's inspiring. No, thank you, Dr. McCoy. It's an inspiration to be interviewed with you. Kenson Cass is the National Director in Haiti. Uh, we'll hear from him how he became a leader and what it means to be a leader within the Haitian organization. By going up an NPH, I think I learned a lot to become a leader. Since I was a child, um, I was a leader, but I didn't know about the word leadership. Because I'm saying that because I remember when I was a child, I used to always have my friend with me and I was always the one who bring them to go everywhere. At that time, as a child, I used my leadership to do something bad then. You know? Now, how old were you when you came to the home? I was five years old when I came to the home. And at the same time, uh, well, I, I had my friend with me during bad time every time. Um, I remember a time one of the TO took me and said, okay, I'm going to make you responsible for the other children, the little one. And at that time, I started learning to become a leader because I was responsible of them, not to tell them what to do, but to help them, to support them. And that was a big change in my life by being someone who has to be in a group to do a like bad thing, to become responsible to others, it changed my life a lot at that time. And while I was responsible of them, I become someone else. I learned a lot. And I think education is the main thing that changed my life. And when I'm saying education, it's not about grammar, mathematics, it's about the value of MPH, about going in a family. Because while I was an NPH, by listening to people, by listening that our values, responsibility were, I started to understand, okay, I need to be someone else. I need to take responsibility. I need to work, I need to do something to do that. But after that, when I left NPH, one thing that changed my life and that made me become the leader of who I am now is I had a call after the earthquake. When the earthquake happened, it was a dramatic thing in Haiti. It was the first time I heard about an earthquake, and I was fortunate because nothing happened to me. But that time, I did get my life to support others. And I used to go to the hospital to support people. And one thing came to my mind at that time. There were children who lost their family, and I wanted to support them. And I got to Alfonso saying, I have an idea. I would like to help, to help those children, to go to the area where the children help, to let them watch some movies, play with them. And he was very happy to hear that. And we started a team to do that. We were six in the team. But two of us was always like there. We didn't have the time to start working. We didn't have the time to finish work. We, always, we were always there to support those children. And one thing that I learned about leadership, you need to be available for others. Others need to be able to, to feel that they can count on you. I think that's a very good thing. That's what I'm now, <clears throat> in Haiti, you have really a number of organizations now. You have hospital, you have St. Luke's Hospital, you have schools, you have really a large or organization with different kinds of organizations. How do you work together? How do you uh, work with other leaders within the organization? Uh, like you say, I think we are the biggest NPH, um, um, NPH home in Haiti. Um, I, I'm the responsible of the home, and we have the good responsible for the hospital. And like you say, the same organization is like a brother to NPH, because it was founded by Father Rick, the 
um, boys that are from DHA. Um, working with others for me, it's something that I learned while I was a kid in MPH. And it's very, I feel very okay by working with Dr. Gotti because I was a kid in MPH and she starts working for MPH like 25 years ago. The chairman who know my history, who knows me since I was a kid, and it's the same for the same organization. The people who are wanting this organization are my brothers. They go up in NPH. That's why I make it more easy um, to work together. Uh, even though we used to have like some trouble, some some little thing, but I think it's okay. Life is like that. Haiti has had the misfortune of having lots of nat natural disasters coming in. How how does leadership respond to these kinds of challenges? Um, as a young leader, um, sometimes I, I was thinking about it to become the president of the country. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking very deeply about it, but I changed my mind about it because I think I don't need to be the president to do something, to change something. I just want, now I'm decided to, to be part of what is happening in the country. That's why I want to start a nursery, like for plants, like to have a nursery for plants. Um, because our country is so corrupted, I think it should be very difficult when I become the president to make some change. I think it will be very, more easy to make some change in the background than having the title because everybody who's gonna be focused on you is gonna be very difficult. Um, I will start the nursery and I think it's gonna change a lot of things in the country. Richard Frechette has been, in a sense, the developer of the whole Haitian organization for 25 years. And uh, what have you learned from him as you've taken on a leadership role? Um, I want to start by saying my history with Father Rick he started since I was in another orphanage. Father Rick is the one who took me from this orphanage to NPH since I was five years old. Because I was with the sister of Charlie, the sister of Mother Teresa, and I was very sick of malnutrition. I was malnutrition. And Father Rick took me to the hospice sent me to the hospital. And after that, um, sent me to the orphanage in Kenskov. Um, I learned a lot from Father Egg. Sometimes I'm thinking about, I would like to be like Father Egg, even though it's very difficult. Because Father Egg is someone who has dedicated his life to help others. Father Egg, he don't even have like a house, a car with his own. It's very, like, it's very hard like, to follow him because it's someone very different, <laughs> you know? And one thing that I like about him when he's like teaching us about leadership, he's not like saying us what to do. He always say, in my opinion, if I was in your place, I will do this, I will do that. I think that's something that makes us grow. Because sometimes I follow his advice, sometimes I decide to do my, my own thing because I feel free because he's saying, if I was in your position, I would do this. You know? um, I feel I learned a lot about him. He's someone that we, we love a lot. It's like my father, we call it father, or Gamun, I think, yeah, it's um, very important for us. Within the organization, uh, how would you respond to those who say, I would like to be a leader in the future? Um, as in, in Expo Kenya, um, I think it's really good like, to say something to my little brothers and sisters. What I would like to tell them is, they all can become leaders. They can become leaders. It's sure that by growing up, um, you see leadership as a position, as a title, but being a leader is to be available to help others. Being a, a leader is to be available so others can trust, can believe in you. Um, they all can become a leader if I'm a leader now. I think my brothers and sisters can become a leader. A leader creates trust and a leader creates hope. When people feel 
fearful, anxious. A leader is able, a good leader is able to turn that in to a positive attitude, a sure. ho hopeful attitude. Of, and I think we need a lot more of that, don't we? Yeah, sure. And I think that's why um, I'm in this position now. Because I'm dedicating my life to support my brothers and sisters. Whoever has a problem, they can call me. They all know my numbers. They know they can call me. The workers, the um, children. Like, that's why whenever I go like to visit them, I feel very happy when the children feel okay to come to me. And when they have like trouble, they can call me, they can explain to me. I think that's something really important for me and for them. Well, thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. Inspiring. Thank you. One of our most effective leaders, Stefan Feuerstein, who is now National Director in Honduras. And we'd like to find out from Stefan how, why he came to NPH in the first place, and how he became a leader, and what does he see the qualities needed to be a leader at NPH. So Stefan, why did you come in the first place, and, and then why did you stay? I think my reasons for coming to NPH were very different than my reasons for staying. My reasons to come out here to, to be a volunteer, they were more, I have to admit, they were more selfish reasons. I wanted to go out, I wanted new experiences, I wanted to learn new things, I wanted to learn a new language, I wanted to see new things. But the, as time went on, being around people like Reinhard, Reinhard Kohler, being around the kids that I was taking care of, being around the other volunteers, and seeing how, if done well, this kind of work can really change the lives of people, change the lives of kids, and those, and, and change the lives of everyone involved. You know, like incident, reasons. incidentally, before I go on, Reinhard Kohler was a volunteer. Yes, of course. And now he is uh, the, uh, been the president of the whole organization. Yes, so indeed. that's another good example. A very good example. A very good example. Right, continue. But as I was, as I spent time with the kids, and as I saw the impact that NPH has in their lives, my reasons for staying were very, they, they, they were changed completely. I stayed because I realized that this, this organization, this family, is very real in the lives of these kids. That amazing kids are given amazing chances and opportunities to become who they should be, to become who they could be. That NPH provides them with a space to dream again, a space to be kids again. And as I saw how NPH has an impact on their lives, then I wanted to be a bigger part of it. I wanted to be more involved in it. And so basically, they changed me. So then, uh, what does it mean to be a leader, though? A like national director, what are the qualities needed? I think the first, the most important quality is simply to care, to honestly care about how, how other people how other people are, to take very seriously the impact that you can have on the lives of others, to take very seriously that, as Father Rick Frechette in Haiti says, once something enters your conscience, you're responsible for it. And when you have these kids in front of you, and you realize that you can be a very good part of their life, if you just try, then it gives you an incredible responsibility towards them. And if you use that when, when making your decisions on a daily basis, then and that's how this organization grows, and that's how they're really given a chance to be, to be who they could be. Now, NPH is facing uh, major challenges today. Uh, a lot having to do with government regulations, change from the Father Wasson's first vision of a family <coughs> that all live together to an organization that's much more interactive with the whole culture and community. Could you say something about the leadership <coughs> qualities required to lead change? I think the leadership qualities required in these kind of moments where there are a lot of emotions involved and a lot of where people are used to doing things in a certain way and then because realities change, you might not be able to continue doing it that way, is first of all, being able to remind people what the, you know, what our north is. And be able to remind people what we're supposed to be working towards, what things are not negotiable. 
but then to see how you can give people the feeling that they can express themselves and that they can be taken into consideration and that so basically mediating between so many different groups of people that that have very strong opinions and every now and then just remind them yes no you're on the right you're 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 facing the wrong direction or you're you're arguing about the wrong things and of remembering what what do we actually control and what do we have to accept what can we work to change and what things do we just have to to see how we adapt to them it's it's putting things in a balance and trying to figure out what we can work with and what we should work with. What do you see as a kind of ideal vision of where NPH is going? What should it be look, look like in five years? NPH certainly has changed because the world around us has changed. Um, certain things will change because of the communication that we, that we now have. I remember when I was a volunteer, nobody had cell phones. Nobody had an email in, on the ranch in Honduras. If you wanted to make a phone call, you had to get on a bus to the city and, and like an hour away and you could make a phone call there. Now we're more connected to the families of the kids. We're more connected amongst each other. And so that, that inevitably will change how we, how, how we work together and what kind of, and what, what is the best, the best course of action to take in any given situation. The one thing that will not change is the sense of family. Or it's the one thing that should not change. But I do think that We'll, we'll have to branch out into different kinds of, of projects, different kinds of programs, different ways of being family. Um, it's not just the, the looking in at our homes, but looking at our homes and also looking at different ways that we can care for, for kids in, in society. Everything is far more interconnected now, and to just focus on the one part, just, just the homes, I think would be a mistake. I think we need to we need to look at the different ways that we can interact with kids, that we can help kids to realize their full potential, and that we can help kids to be productive members of their societies, looking at all the different ways that we can do it, but without losing our flavor. Now, do you, do you see uh, young men and women in, at NPH who have the capacity to be leaders in the future? Have you seen them in, within? The Honduran organization? Oh, certainly. certainly. And, and how do you help them become leaders? Help them become leaders is remind them good, of good, good role models. We all need good role models. We need people to inspire us. We need, to, we need people who remind us what's really important in our lives. And then also give them the space so that they can actually practice being leaders. Um, I think the temptation is often to say, if I'm in charge, then I need to control everything. No. In, if I'm in charge, it's reminding people in which direction we're supposed to be looking, but everyone else is supposed to be doing their, their piece towards getting there. And everyone, else, and everyone has to have the space to try to, to, to contribute to, to our mission, to try to contribute to our, to our voyage into the future. So giving, uh, many of our heads of department are, are hermanos mayores, have grown up in the home. Um, ideally, they grow up, they go out, work somewhere else, and then come back, kind of see something different, and then come back and work for us. Um, but many of them grew up with us, many of them really understand who we are, and they bring amazing ideas to the table. And if, you just, we, if we give them the space and the support, and a few reminders every now and then, then they do amazing, amazing work. Great. It's inspiring. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.